All right, today's video is on angular motion. All right, this is chapter seven in our book. Uh, the first thing I need to, for you to get across in this, sorry, my computer kind of messed up for a second, but we got to kind of understand a little bit about circles. And you already do know some stuff about circles. You know that starting here is zero degrees and that if we continue up on around the circle here, then we'll get up to 90 degrees at the top of the arc, 180 degrees over here. And then if we slide over, well, I should say down, we'll get to 270 degrees. And then if you make one complete revolution, that's 360 degrees. So this is what we refer to as a revolution, one time around the circle. And so far, everything we've done in physics up to this point, we've done in degrees. Now, here's the only catch. This chapter, you cannot use degrees for anything. If you work a problem and it gives you 40 degrees, you've got to convert that. Now, at this point, you should be saying, what are we going to be converting to? I've never used anything other than degrees. Well, you've seen the button on your calculator. It says radians mode. Now, what's neat is we're actually still not really going to use our calculators. We're still not going to change the modes on anything, but we're going to work every question in this chapter in the unit known as radians. Now, radians still starts if we were doing like the whole round the circle thing. This is still zero radians over here. And so you should be like, okay, well, I can handle this. Zero degrees, zero radians. Here's what a radian is. A radian is referred to as this. Let's go all the way over to here. 180 degrees, and you've seen this before, it's pi. Half of a revolution is pi radians. So this is pi radians over here, and then now we can kind of come back and fill it out a little bit. So that means one entire trip around the circle means you will have traveled two pi radians, or you can just, a lot of times in here, we'll just go ahead and say 6.28 because in the end, we've got to use a decimal in here. So and this will end up becoming one of our conversion factors here in a second. But anyway, a circle will start at zero radians. That's pi radians. Uh, this over here would be pi over two, 90 degrees. It's If you take a look, this is what's funny. Half of a pi is only like this little quadrant section here. But anyway, so half a pi is really this. Fascinating. And then we can kind of keep going around over here. This this point down here would be 2 pi over 3 radians. But again, now if this is trig class, we'd get in the unit circle and y'all would have to learn to break all this down, which actually is not hard. But all I really need for you to get out of all of this is it's like inches and feet. And the only thing I need for you to be able to do, I need for you to understand a couple of conversion factors. One. I need for you to understand that one revolution is the same as two pi for radians. So a revolution once around the circle is 6.28 radians. So there you go, run out of room over there, but anyway, hopefully you got that. One rev is 6.28 radians. The only other thing that we might need at some point is we might need to be able to convert degrees to radians. So what we'll just do is this. Let's try something. 360 degrees divided by 2 pi. Let's see what we get when we divide 360 degrees by 2 pi. We get 57.29. And if you're wondering why did I do this, this will be a conversion factor. We'll come back here and say now that 1 radian is equal to 57.3 degrees. Now, this will be the two conversion factors we need to work this unit. Because every formula for this unit has to be in radians. If it gives you revs, you've got to convert. If it gives you degrees, you've got to convert. Every formula uses radians in this chapter. All right, now that we've discussed that, let's take a look at one more thing. So let's take a look at something traveling with a bit of an arc here. So we've got this little piece, and we know what this is. This is radius here, right? So this is the radius of our circle. We know that this is always referred to as theta, although we're going to look at theta with a little different perspective in this unit. Now, what we need to understand, or what we need to get is this. 
let's look at this. This piece of, let's think about something that starts out traveling here and moves in a circle. Think about this. If it moves in a circle, take a look. I'm just kind of filling this in. Trying to fill it in nice and bold here. Not the prettiest, but it'll work. Let's talk about something that moves. Um, we've got an angle. What is this? Well, you're going to learn one new letter. This is what's known as S. S, that's right. And we've got a, one brand new equation. Now, we actually don't use this a whole lot. Theta is equal to S over R. And this is the only equation I'm even going to give you in this video. And we don't use it a whole lot, but... Let's kind of break down what everything is inside here. If I can move my paper in here. Let's go with R first. R is the easiest. R is radius. And in terms of what unit you use for radius, it could be in meters, it could be in centimeters, it doesn't matter, inches, feet, it's irrelevant. Theta, on the other hand, you ready? New, new word. Angular displacement. What? That's right. Angular displace, angular displacement is what theta is referred to. And then and here's the thing. Theta for this chapter has to be in radians. So if I was working this problem here and this problem come out and said something rotates through an angle of 30 degrees. Before I can do any math with this 30 degrees, I'm going to have to convert it to radians. So... Well, let's go ahead and do this. Let's say you work a problem and it said something moved with a radius of 5 meters through an angle of 30 degrees. What distance did it travel? See that letter S. Ah, I can't hardly move my stuff. That little letter S. S is what's known as arc length. And its name says it all. It's a length. That's a distance. Now, what, the reason why we have to be in radians, radians is cool. Radians can just disappear and reappear in these formulas. That's what makes it kind of cool. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's see if you can figure this out. Let's say something starts here. At, we'll call this position A. And let's say it rotates to this position B. How far has it traveled lengthwise? In other words, this distance, not displacement. We're not trying to figure out how far A is from B in a straight line. That's not, we're not looking for that. We're actually looking for this distance. That's what this S represents, this arc length, this distance of point traveled between those two positions. And all we've got to do is plug in and find S. One catch, that 30 degrees, we cannot use 30 degrees. So I'm just going to go 30 degrees. Draw my line, put my X, draw my line, and I know that there are 57.3 degrees. I did a little degree sign. It doesn't matter. Degrees, degrees. Per one radian. Now I'm going to take a calculator. 30 divided by 57.3. That's 0.52356 radians. So I'm just going to go, that's going to be 0.52 for me. So I'm going to say point five two rads so and most of the first problems in this chapter like your very first homework question it's just going to want you to do conversions it might give you three revolutions and say convert to radians or degrees or anyway that's all that's all your first thing is that you're going to be doing all right so let's see what we can get into here theta equals s over r so I'm going to rewrite the equation because I like doing that to make sure I remember the equation. So theta is 0.52 rads equals S over 5. And this is going to be basically half of 5, so 2.5, but we'll be more exact. 2.6. Ooh. So this is 2.6, and now you should be saying, well, what unit is this 2.6 going to be? This distance, S is 2.6. Well, if R is in meters, then this is also in meters. Now, the only thing you might be looking at, well, where does the radians go? Because if you look at the problem, you got 5 meters times a half a radian. This is the cool thing about radians. 
They just disappeared when we worked the problem. What? Yes, it's amazingly fantastic invention, the disappearing radian. So the radians just, we can mark those out, and we're left with 2.6. And that's kind of what makes a radian a little bit of a cooler unit. Now, you've kind of got the basics on getting this unit started. So let's do one more example of something before we go. Let's actually work one example problem. This will be uh, my example 7.1, and that'll be it kind of for this video. I just wanted to get you introduced to this idea of radians and revolutions, and make sure you understood all this. Most of the time when we work problems, a lot of things are given in RPMs. Now, this example is trying to be a little bit more difficult, and it's giving you a unit of revolutions per hour. Well, that's actually an odd unit to be given. Now, if you can convert a mile per hour, which we did before, you should be able to do this. Write down 1480, and this says revolutions per hour. So when you write it down, write it down like this. And this is a very common conversion. I'm going to put my X. I'm going to put my line. Now, usually these problems are in revs per minute. And that's our most normal conversion. So you'll work a problem, and I'll just make some up. And you'll work one that says something's moving at 20 revs per minute. And we'll work that. And we'll do that in a second, just to make sure you got it. But if you can do a rev per hour, you can do a rev per minute. We want to get this to rads per second is what the answer wants. Well, one revolution, one rev, is 6.28 radians. And now we can X this and put a mark through this. Now we've got our revolutions cancel. We're in rads per hour. And now we can come back and just go, well, there's 3,600 seconds for every one hour. Because if hours is on bottom here, hours has got to be on top there. And we can mark out the hours. And we're done with this problem. So we can sit here and do a little conversion. It says the answer is 2.58, but why would we ever trust it? 1480 times 6.28 divided by 3600. And it says the answer is 2.58 rads per second. And it turns out we are right. Uh, now, if you're doing revs per minute, the only difference would be you'd still go 6.28 rads per one rev. And again, if you don't get where I'm getting this conversion factor from, just remember, a revolution, one revolution is the same as 2 pi, which would be 6.28. And that's where we get that conversion factor from. And then if we're revolutions per minute, then all we've got to do is go 60 seconds per one minute. And then you can sit here and multiply this out and get your answer. All right. So this is the first thing I need you to be able to do. The first problems in the chapter are going to be problems that give you something like 20 degrees. And then it's going to say, how many radians is that? Or something like that. Or it might do like this question and give you a revolution per minute. It might even do backwards. It, you might see a problem that gives you rads. Wow, I cannot spell rad radians per second, and then it might want you to convert it to revolutions per minute. The big thing I'm going to try and get across, though, is this. The formulas, the problems in this chapter have to be worked in radians. If you work any problem and it asks you to find rotations or revolutions, by the way, you will see the problem rotation a bunch. If you see the word rotation, that is a synonym with revo... I can't spell anything anymore. Christmas, it blew my mind. Anyway, rotations, revolutions mean the same thing. Don't get messed up by that. But anyway, if you work a problem that wants revolutions, I'm sorry. You've got to work the entire problem in radians and convert to get their answer. But anyway, that's all this first video is about. Thank you for watching.